Hello, everyone. Welcome back to our math channel online today again. In this video, I would like to show you how to sketch the uh, trigonometric function, but it will be a tangent function. So we have done the uh, cosine um, function and the side function. Um, we call uh, the wave uh, shape of the sin, um, sinusoidal function. So today we will continue with the tangent function. And I will, in the next video, I will provide you the information about the application, how we apply these function into our real life problem and we solve the application problem as well. So after this video, please stay tuned for our next video. Um, and you will find that the application of the, of the uh, mathematics uh, very um, interesting um, in terms of how we use math in our life um, for the problem solving. So let me start with the first draft I already sketched on the board. That is a basic tangent function, which is I have shown you in our first lecture. But in this one, before we sketch the transformation of tension, I would like to review a little bit about the shape of tension lie so that we um, so that it will be easier for us to get the new transformation function. And there's some pop-up. <laughs> it's so bothering. Okay, so let me start with the basic graph. So we have the basic graph y equal 10x. Um, and you notice that our graph, right? Let me talk about the scale first, right? So this is the x-axis and this is the y-axis. And for the x-axis, this is the origin with the zero. And then the next um, number I mark here is pi over four. And of course, this will be pi over two, right, right here. Um, the scale right here will be pi over four and the scale here will be pi over two. And this one is pi. And of course, the next will be 3 pi over 2. And the next unit is 2 pi. So we look at the two intervals, right? Um, not one way cycle, but we look a little bit more than that. Remember, this graph keep going, right? It not stop right here, but we don't have enough room. So we just sketch three of uh, the wavelength here but it's supposed to be um, infinite, right? Up to the left side as well as the right side. Also, let's notice the scale here. So um, the y-axis I mark number one, and down here is minus one. So right here is one, and right here is minus one. And you notice these um, button, right? These um, dots here is represent the dot scale at number one for y, and number one for y here as well, right? As well, here is minus one, and the dot here is minus one as well. Now these are the the dot point, so so that we can sketch the shape more easily. So the tension, um, and why the tension look like this? Okay, let me explain. If you remember the unit circle, right? Um, these unit circle, you see the first quadrant, the second quadrant, the third quadrant, and the fourth quadrant. And these are the basic of uh, the scale of the unit circle. We will remember, right? So start from a zero degree, we have a coordinate here at one and zero, 
for the angle zero as well as the angle two pi, right? And the first coordinate stand for cos, and the second coordinate always stand for psi. So if we look at here, we know the psi ratio of the pi, this is the pi, right? And this is two pi. So we notice that the pi ratio of this number Sorry, I'm looking for the one is not run out in my, yeah. So these number, this is the minus one, which is the coordinate x or uh, cos of pi, right? And zero is sine of pi. So by looking at this number, it's a fixed number, right? For the fixed angle. So we know the sine of pi is zero and the cos of pi is minus one. And if you look at here, pi over two, which is 90 degree angle, the cos of pi over two is zero and the sine of pi over two is one. Now you also know that 10 equal psi over cos right, tension equals psi over cos. And if we put a number in here for the pi over two angle, then the psi is one on the top and the cos is zero at the bottom. But anytime you have a zero at the bottom, what does that tell you? It tell you that the function does not exist. And anytime you have a point where the function is do not exist. At that point, we have a um, we have an asymptote, right? We have asymptote go to that point. And therefore, if you look at on the scale here, represent for the scale of the angle at pi over two, which is this angle right here, the function do not exist. And therefore, we draw the dotted, dotted line as the asymptote. It means if you look at the function, it everywhere from zero and go across the number one and go up, up, up to the asymptote. But it keep going to infinity, right? Up here, up here, up here. But it never across this asymptote. Basically, this way shape here never touched the asymptote. Because at the asymptote, the function does not exist. And therefore, we cannot allow the way here supposed to get supposed to touch the asymptote. It just keep going, right? And the arrow show that it keep going up, but never touch the asymptote here. So now we know that tangent have a asymptote have an asymptote at pi over two because at pi over two we end up with the situation one over zero, the ratio. And anytime we have a zero as the denominator, we kind of undefined or do not exist. And it's true, this wave never touched the asymptote. And then there's no point on the, on the line here, on the curve here, have the value at pi over two, right? It has an x value at pi over two. There's no such point, right? So now if you look at the next asymptote, so the solid line here not stand for the asymptote, but I map the dotted line stand for the asymptote. So you have an asymptote go to pi over two, go to three pi over two, and on the other side, the same will go to minus pi over two. And if I continue draw here, it will go to minus three pi over two but uh, we only have the shape like this. And my cat opened the door on the tie, so he might, my, like my ball is <laughs> unstable, sorry about that. My cat is really clever and it's very, he just tried to open on the door of my house, right? <laughs> That's how he did. Um, and therefore, I already sealed this door, but he still can open it. Sorry, 
Okay. So the way for tension curve will go through the origin and go to pi across the axis as pi and zero. And if we continue, it will across to pi here as well, but we stop, right? And notice that at pi over two or minus pi over two, we have two asymptotes. Now, how do we know at three pi over two, we have another asymptote? You can look at here, this angle down here, right? This is pi over two, one pi over two, two pi over two, and down here is three pi over two. This angle right here. Right? So it means this angle, the arrow like that in the standard position. So at three pi over two, we do have the situation of zero and minus one instead of zero and one, but we have zero minus one, which is the same if you put here still minus one over zero, still undefined, right? So at three pi over two, we have another asymptote because the way never touched this line. So that's how we know. Also, based on this, we also be able to calculate of any asymptote of the tension if we know the first one, right? And remember, one cycle, one cycle for sine and cos will be two pi, right? One cycle rotation for sine and cos. But for 10, the one cycle, for 10, the one cycle equal one pi. Not two pi, but one pi. And therefore, from here to here, right? To here, see the one cycle, one way length cycle, right? We have two of them like this. And this is for 10. And the distance from here to here is pi, not two pi, right? If it's two pi will be from here uh, all the way to here, right? That will be two pi. But you see this, this is in the middle. And if we subtract this and we subtract this, from here to here, exactly one pi distance. So it means for one cycle of 10, it is one pi, not two pi, right? So therefore, to find the asymptote, all what you do is yield the first asymptote, right? The first asymptote is pi over two, adding with how many circles is n cycle you want to put n integer equal one, two, three, four, five time with another pi, so n of pi. So as long as you do like this, you have create, you will create a next asymptote, the next asymptote. So for example, the three pi over two will be equal to pi over two, adding with one cycle, right? Time with pi, which is the same like adding with pi, which is become three pi over two. So if you know the first asymptote and you add in the n multiplied with pi and the number of n could be changed if you want to find the second cycle or the third cycle and so on, right? You will multiply with each cycle is one pi. So if this is pi over two, add another one pi, it becomes two pi over two. You will have another asymptote repetition of the periodic asymptote, right? So that's the way how you find the asymptote. Then, and you can find as many as possible depend on n equal one, two, three, where n equal one, two, three integer, right? So that's the formula to find the asymptote, asymptote of the tension. And remember the period of the tension is one pi, not two pi like sine and cos. So these are the information you need to know, okay? Now let's talk about how we're going to 
Get the transformation of this one. 10x minus 2. Noticing that this is the displacement, right? 10x minus 2 here. 2 here represent the displacement. Vertical, vertical displacement, right? Vertical displacement. So therefore, the shape here doesn't have any stretching vertical stretch factor or horizontal stretch factor or shrink cone, right? Stretch or shrink cone. And no face shape, left or right, but only have a displacement, vertical displacement downward because this is minus, right? Minus two. So therefore, if we be able to use this as the basic scale, and we just ship, we just ship our scale down to minus two unit. So this scale here at one will ship down to zero and minus one. Then we be able to scale it. Now, because there are no phase ship. The only the down, down, downward shape. However, because this wave designed in the way that it keep going like this, the same shape continuously. So even though if we have this vertical stretch for the wave, the shape is, doesn't change much, right? If you have a wave like this and you stretch vertical stretch, you stretch longer, longer, right? The shape is just like this, it's just keep the point here instead of at this number might be shipped up here if you stretch this way, right? Um, now, if you stretch horizontally, then yes, instead of go like this, it will go like this. If you stretch horizontally, or I go to the left like that, but the shape of the way is just the same, right? So that makes sense to get the tension a little bit easier when we know about their shape is not changing, either we stretch horizontally or vertically, right? So let's draw it. So I'm gonna show you how we draw it. And I'm going to guess maybe this. And because we're gonna ship down, so I'm gonna Sketch this higher a little bit so we have more room to ship it down. So the shape is exactly the same, except that we will have to ship the vertical point down a little bit, right? So let's say this is zero origin and everything stay the same. So I'm gonna mark two pi here and half of two pi is pi, right? That's the way we mark it. And half of pi is pi over two. And half of here is three pi over two. Now on the left, it will be the same. I'm gonna see the distance here and here will be the same. It will be minus pi over two, and this is minus pi, okay. So now we'll draw the asymptote. Now, do you think that we have any change about asymptote? The answer is no, right? Because we just ship the wave down by two units, but we're not changing phase ship of anything. So therefore, the angle of the 10x here still have an asymptote go to pi over two and three pi over two. So let's mark the asymptote exactly the way it is. Go to pi over two dotted line. Dotted line is then for asymptote. Now your teacher may be changing, right? Depend on the reference they might mark the solid line as the asymptote. But for me, I'm gonna mark the 
um, dotted line as the asymptote. So we have two asymptotes floating here, two pi over two and pi over two. And on the other side, exactly the same. Okay. So now we can ship. Now the point we have to ship. So instead of the way go to the number one here, now this point will go down to zero and minus one. So instead of here, let's say here's one. And let's put on the other side. And you see minus one and minus two. So the dotted point is supposed to be in the middle here. Now we we'll move down to one to unit. So it like right here. So this point now we we'll move down one, two, right? Because we ship down one, two. So this point will be no longer there, but it's down here. And another point here as well. So it's supposed to go through one. And let's get the solid line here as well, the same. Supposed to here, but it go down to minus one to zero and minus one down here. So these two points right here, we move down to this location. What about the zero point when the way across this one? We have to ship down as well, so it will be here, right? From here, we ship down to there. As well, on the other side, it's supposed to be minus one, we ship down to minus two, minus three, we ship down through here. And so this part, it will ship down to minus three and this point at minus one will ship down at minus three as well. Okay, so let's guess. Now remember the way shape still the same thing, right? Never touch that in the start from there, go to here, and go across here, right? Instead of zero and go like this and like that. Now the other side will be the same. It never touch the asymptote. It go to this point. And again, right here at pi, right at pi, instead of here, we go down one, two. So we'll go across here and like this. So that's how the new tension look like. Exactly the shape is no chain. And from here to here, still one cycle, right? Which is the distance equal pi. And on the other side, it will be something like this, but instead of touching at minus pi, it will go down one, two. So it looks something So, so it will be touching the pi at two, so minus one, minus two. Right? Something like that. Okay. That's how it looks like if you want to get three of them. 
And you can see the shape exactly the same, except that it moves, it shift down. Um, so it looked like stretch a little bit, right? Vertical stretch a little bit because the way um, we ship it down. So it looked a little bit straight, vertical straight this way, but nothing changed. Okay, so that's how you do this for the first function. That's how you sketch. So now I'm going to show you. I'm sorry, I have to close this uh, advertisement pop up. So now I'm going to show you how to sketch 310 to X. So how are we going to sketch 310 to X? So let me show you. Now, noticing that we don't have any displacement here, but this time we have the A here equal three, which is M2, right? It means vertical stretch factor, vertical stretch by a factor of three, right? By a factor. And anytime we talk about factor, we multiply. We don't adding or subtract, right? So now we're going to find out our vertical stretch factor. So maybe I'm going to do this way. What else do we have noticed? So we notice this number. M2 is stretched by a factor of three. What is this one? Two X instead of one X, right? So our angle will change. So let's find out the period. Period equal the formula for sine code is two, two pi divided by B. For 10, it's just pi divided by B. That's the formula for, for the period. Now our B here is, this is the letter B, right? Our B here is two. So it will be equal pi over two. So the period will be narrower instead of pi like this. Now it should half of it will be pi over two. So our wave will look skinnier, right? Because of this vert, uh, horizontal shrinking factor, right? So we divide it for horizontal and we divide instead of multiply. So pi divided by B, pi divided by two, because our B is two. So the period no longer pi, but it will be just half of this, right? So let's find out, but let's scale the same thing. Now, if we scale them the same, we will realize the chain. If we scale them differently, we might not realize how the chain looks, right? Even though we might be difficult in terms of sketching if we keep the scale the same thing and we have to narrow it, uh, you know, uh, but let's do that. So this is two pi, let's say this is two pi and the pi is half of it. So right here is our pi and our period is pi over two. So our period here is pi over two. So it means that, let's find out our asymptote. So the equation of asymptote, the equation of asymptote will be equal pi divide by n times b. And let's say the first cycle is one, so it will be asymptote is will be uh, no, sorry, let me see. So our, our angle asymptote is pi over two, um, n times b, and our b is two. So our asymptote is pi over two, right? The original asymptote is pi over two. Now time with b. So it means we have pi over four. Our four is the asymptote for the, our new tension. So here we have a dotted line at pi over four asymptote. Instead of pi over two, it will be pi over four. 
And of course, this will be a solid lie. I go to this angle, we go to here. And so we'll divide this as well. So this will be another dotted line, as in third. And at this point, this is pi over two, so this is pi over four. And one pi over four, two pi over four, three pi over four. So this angle here is three pi over four. And here is pi, okay? So this is three pi over four. Three pi over four. Okay. Now, if we have room, maybe we can just get more. Now on the other side will be another minus pi over four and as the asymptote. And pi over two, minus pi over two, and this should be solid, is minus pi over two. Z minus pi over four. Right here. So now let's talk about MV2. So the point I mark here, right, at zero. Now at zero, if you multiply with three, zero times three is still zero. So notice that this is another point, the function still going through the zero. But at this point, at one, will become three, right? So Let's say this is one, this is two, and this is three. So our poi, one, two, three. Our poi, instead of in the middle here, we'll move up here. So we'll go through that, right? Go through this, our way will go through this, and the other side as well. Um, So this is asymptote. So instead, it will go through this one, right? Okay, so let's sketch it and see what happened. So our square shape will look something like this and go to zero, still go to zero, right? Our way shape still go to zero. But it goes through this poi and it keep going like this, close to the asymptote, but never touch it. And go to zero here and go down this way. Close to this, but never. Oh. Okay, something like this, right? And okay, now this one uh, go to pi, but it will go to pi by two instead. So this will go somewhere like this. Okay. So we get this one. Yeah, let's go like this. And cut through, see, minus pi by two. Okay, so that's how our ten new tension look like for this equation. Y equal three ten to x. So that's how we get this based on the basic shape here. We can get the transformation of tension like this. Next, we're going to show you the next one, and we will be done for this video here show you okay
Okay, the easy way, if you enroll in my online courses, you will rewind the video again and again to watch it. And I don't know, it seems like the, the light might be, the screen is, doesn't look very, very clear to you. I hope the sun, the sunshed is going down a little bit so it look better, right? Before it's so blurry. So now if I put stand away, you can see this function here and this function here a little bit more clearly because the sun is going down. <laughs> we have a spot here and sorry, I cannot fix this because I have a light up there. If I turn off the light, it will be too dark, but the lights up the ceiling is on way like that, right? Unless I change the, but it doesn't help much. So sorry about that but you still be able to see the function, right? Okay, so let's show you how to get this one. Now, you notice this one inside the bracket, right? So first, if you see something like this, you have to transfer the function a little bit. So instead of y equal that, you will have to transfer the function like this. Ten. Four, you factor it out, right? You factor the factor four out, and you open the bracket, and you put x here. And plus, still plus, if it's minus, still minus. And here you put in pi, but because this is just pi, but you factor out the four, then you have to divide this by four, so that the four here will cancel with the four down here, and you get back to pi original function. I mean, in math, you can change the bracket, move them, something like this, but make sure you don't change the value, right? The original is pi. If you write like this, four, four times pi is four pi divided by four is still pi. And therefore, but why do we have to do this? Notice because this is the B letter. If you don't do this, then, you don't see the B letter, right? It's the B letter, this is the A letter, A letter one, right? This is the four for B. That's why you should open the bracket like this and chain like this. Also, if you don't do this one, you might think that this function shift to the left by pi, but actually it shift to the left by pi over four. So this is the C value, remember? And the C value is the phase shift, horizontal shift to the left or to the right. If this is negative, you shift to the right. If this is positive, you shift to the left. And therefore, you have to change, you have to change the formation of it a little bit. We call it manipulation. So in math, we can manipulate the number as long as we don't change the original value. Okay, so now let's take a look at what factor we have here. We have A as one, it means nothing change. We don't have vertical stretch factor. We have horizontal string cone by factor four. We have the horizontal shift to the left by pi over four. And we don't have a vertical shift up or down, right? We don't have a D letter here. So it means our axis still cross the origin is zero. No thing ship down, no thing ship up. But at this point, at this tangent, at number three here, equation here, we will ship to the left. It means we do have horizontal ship, but no vertical ship. Also, no vertical stretch as well. Okay, so let Let's get this one. Um, I'm going to have to write this so that I have a little room. So I'm going to mark the arrow here. I'm going to rewrite up here so that um, we have room. I will fall. So let me erase this one here. So I have no more room. So 
number by on the scale and do exactly the same thing. And we shift to the left. Mm, no. Because we shift to the left. But let's use this because otherwise you will not see it. Obvious, right? So maybe move a little bit. Uh, maybe let me leave it the same way it is so you can you see it more easily. So you see zero is still zero. You see two pi to two pi and this is pi and half of it is pi over two half of it three pi over two and i might have to divide this by pi over four as well so this is one pi over four two pi over four three pi over four and four pi over four and five pi over four, five pi over four right here. So on the other side will be minus pi over four and pi minus pi over two and three pi over four minus and four pi over four, which is minus pi. Okay, so let's find out the period of this function. So the period equal, period equal pi divided by b, right? It's up to pi, like sine cos, but our periods will be just pi divided by b, the b here is four, so we divide by four. So here you go, we have a very narrow period. From zero to pi over four is our period. It means this we have to divide it by half, which is pi over eight. And this have to divide by minus pi over eight. And this have to divide by half for any of them. So our period is pi over four. One cycle is pi over four. And it means our asymptote will be Let's say equation of asymptote. Equation of asymptote will be equal to pi divided by um, two times b, and our b is four. So pi over a is equal to asymptote, and exactly. So I'm gonna mark the equation of asymptote here. And the next will be half of this. The next passing curve will be this. And our function will across at pi over four, like this. And this one will be this here. And there will be another asymptote here. So our asymptote is here, minus pi over a. Equation. Okay, so now let's sketch it. Let's find out. Okay, so we're gonna go very narrow and we're gonna mark at one as well. It's one and minus one. So from here and zero is the way.
Now you might not see it so well. Sorry about this. I don't know how to see it now. And another one going to go here, go across here, and go like this. And like this, and like this. And this one here, maybe go here and go across here. And go across here and go like this. So that's the way it looked like. So now, oh, one more thing I forget. This had to be shipped to the lab pile of four. Mm. Wow. So, how we do that? No problem. We're going to have to be a little bit messy, but. We still can do it now because our wave is shipped to the left by five or four. So let mark this point here, shift to the left by five or four, um, which is this distance, right? Very tiny distance, five or four. So this one will move to here. And each point on the way will shift to pi over four, exactly the same thing, right? So instead of, instead of this one, now everything will be moved to the left by pi over four. So this way will move down here and go like this. So instead of this one here, we will move this one here, right? And so this is not the one. Now this, every part it will shift to here. So it will go like this and write zero, it will go to here. Okay. And let me write this. Now this one will shift to pi over four. Any point on the slide will shift pi over four, pi over four, and therefore it will be like this. So it's easy, right? Just erase this and ship it. Now this one will shift to pi over four, will be here, this will be here, this will be here, and this will be here. So will be this one. And we're gonna erase this. So no problem. That is how it look like. The shift to the left, right, by pi over four. And nothing change. Each point on the origin will just shift to the left, like this. That's how it look like. Okay, so I hope that a little, little bit messy, the reason because I want to show you how narrow it is, right? You can see that this is one way cycle and the period is pi. Now the period is only pi over four. So it's very narrow, right? From here, here is one cycle. From this one to this one is one cycle. And now the cycle is pi over four. And you can see it's shipped to the left, right? By pi over four unit. From this point here, ship here. From here, it's ship here. From here, it's ship here, right? So you can see that. Okay, so I hope that it helps for you when you're sketching the tangent shape um, of the trigonometry function. Um, the next video will show you about the application of the trigonometric function um, 
and you will find it very interesting. So stay tuned for our next video. This is the lesson in the calculus math 12 in BC, but it's equivalent to algebra two in USA. And our North America student across the world can learn this lesson. Keep in mind that if you register to my online course, our online course will help you as a one-on-one -on -one tutoring private. And you don't have to pay $60 an hour, right? <laughs> Secondly, it can act as, it can also act as the assistant teacher. It means if you're shy and you don't want to ask the question. Now, I don't encourage that. Every student should not be shy and should be able to get help from the teachers. However, in case you shy or you don't have time to ask, if you register to my online course, you can watch and you learn the same curriculum, the same material. The idea, the concept of math is stay the same. As long as you understand the concept, it can apply to any question in the test, in the exam, in everywhere. Because if, whether you learn logarithmic function, right? Whether you learn trigonometric function or rational function, the number might be changed. Three become four, four become two, right? But the concepts stay the same. And a lot of my students, when I tutor them, I realize that they don't really like that. They just think that, oh, every teacher gives a different question, every curriculum gives a different lesson. No, it's the same. The trigonometric function, that is how it works. That is how y equal tens of x equal psi cosine tangent. We learn the same thing. Now, once you don't realize they do the same and you don't know how to do it, just because you haven't get it, you haven't absorbed the concept. And to be able to understand math, universal language, doesn't matter you learn from me or you learn from another teacher, it's the same across the world. Maybe it translates in Vietnamese different, maybe it should translate in uh, um, other language are different, but the name might be different. But if you learn it, you will recognize the pattern, you will recognize the concept. And as long as you understand math, you understand the concept, not memorization, then you will be able to sketch the function in any language, regardless of any language. And some of language with the same use the same Latin, right? So if you have y equal x, then in my language they actually write at y equal x as well, right? So <laughs> therefore, it's not too bad. It's still a little bit different that once you change the language. But I mean the concept you can absorb. As I just talk to the same North America curriculum. I'm not talking about students in Vietnam or in China because their language is totally different to our language. So we cannot, even though we use the same universal language in math, but the way we say the name and um, that will be a fact a lot, right? So of course it will be a lot more difficult for the Chinese students to learn math in English, right? Um, than the English student learn math in English. Um, however, I'm just telling that the concept exactly the same. And it means that our North American student will have no problem to understand my lesson online. And you can register and earn the certificate if you pass the exam and get a full courses. Or you can register because it's free, right? You can take one chapter here and one chapter in your school and compare it and to understand better and use it as your tutor, private tutor. And especially if you register and learn the material in advance, don't think that next semester when I have to relearn it, it will be boring. You not even remember what you learned, to be honest. 
for learning academic at the first time, you might not remember. You have to rehearse a lot, um, unless you're a genius. I'm not talking about that, right? Now, I'm not genius. I'm just normal people like you, like on the student. It means I have to rehearse when I learn and have to review it when I learn. I cannot just learn it and forget a long time and not review and remember, no. So unless you are very good at math, you are a genius, you have a, you have a natural talent, right? Then I'm not talking about those people. I'm talking about our normal people. When we learn the first tie in academic, we think that we learn the second tie will be bored. Don't think that way because you might not even though remember what you learned. You have learned the first time. But if you remember, then you will say, ah, I come across with this already. Oh, now I get it. See? So the more you learn, the better you get it. It's nothing harm, nothing boring like you think. I went through what I have learned. So I have experience and I tell you about my true experience. <laughs> anyway, it's up to you, right? Um, most students don't want to learn a lot, especially in high school. Um, you learn because you have to learn. If we don't even though regulate that student have to pass math 11 to have a diploma, high school diploma, Maybe you guys don't even learn it. <laughs> Why bother, right? But in my back home and in most country, um, students have to have a general education at least up to math 12. And in North America, we make it very easy. We said, if you're not major in math, you don't have to finish math 12. You just need to finish math 11 in my, our BC Canada curriculum. You can have a diploma um high school diploma high school graduation uh only up to math 11 the requirement you don't even have to take math 12 but if you like it and you want it as select as the elective you can do that that's re reduce a lot of stress and pressure for students i think our back home is a little bit more difficult um it's required on the student have regardless any major, you have to finish math 12 to earn a high school diploma. And we don't have a different math like here. We have so different math. We have so many different math. In our country, math 12 is math 12, only the same curriculum. Math 11 is math 11. It's not changing like foundation or principle or pre-calculus. Like we have so many math and <laughs> a lot of students still don't want to learn. <laughs> but anyway, I talk out the topic a little bit for fun. I hope you enjoy my video and stay tuned for our next video. Thanks for watching, everyone.